And a live look now at the Salesforce Tower in San Francisco. It's about to officially become the tallest building in the Bay Area. Only on five, we're about to take you to the very top of the tower. KPI X5's Wilson Walker, the first to broadcast live from the top. And Wilson, the building certainly changes the look of the city. Yeah, about four years and $1.1 billion later, this building will top out officially tomorrow. And uh, as we look north here, we can look from what will soon officially be the tallest building in the city to what used to be the tallest building in the city. And getting from here to there, pretty long, interesting story, and it can tell us a lot about San Francisco in the year 2017. We are seeing the most profound and dramatic change to the skyline since the late 60s and early 70s when the Transamerica Pyramid went up and the Bank of America building went up and all the kind of flat top towers in there. No matter what road brings you to San Francisco, it is right in front of you now. From the East Bay Hills to Bernal Heights, this skyscraper is grand. And this is just sort of out. Yeah. You know, I'm here, <laughs> and you're not going to miss me. And once the stature of the thing really hits you, you start seeing it everywhere. And suddenly it's like, that wasn't there before. So what do we make of the Salesforce Tower looming over city landmarks and reshaping our skyline? All of a sudden, everyone was noticing it. John King is architecture critic for the San Francisco Chronicle, and Jasper Rubin is a professor of urban planning at San Francisco State University. You know, when you have the tallest building, there's something about the tallest building that really marks a spot. So let's start by talking height. The Bank of America building stands 779 feet tall, the pyramid 853 feet, and Salesforce will finally take the city above 1,000 feet, but taller doesn't necessarily mean larger. Funny thing about that building, it has about 1.4 million square feet in it. The Bank of America building has 1.8 million square feet in it. So we have a tower that is deliberately towering, what you might call an emphatic statement in a discussion that goes back to at least the 1960s. The apartment structures of Fontana probably initiated the sort of the height battles in San Francisco uh, because they blocked views from Russian Hill. The San Francisco skyline is changing once again. New high-rise buildings are going up at an unprecedented rate. Throughout the 70s, you had various initiatives to try and slow down downtown, stop Manhattanization, control the towers. The planning department down the towers that were allowed. And, and people want to build to the height limit, so you, you get the flat top buildings. The result was a skyline that a lot of people hated, and it was frozen in time by the resistance to more growth, and there wouldn't be a thaw for decades. We think the skyline could use some more uh, oomph. It's flat. Now that is San Francisco's planning director in 2006 laying out this plan for more oomph. It'd be nice to see a little more peaking there. And this was the city's crude illustration of that peaking idea. And 10 years later, we're really starting to see it. So that's part of it. It's part of the idea is to sculpt the skyline in such a way that it feels like topography. So you'll have this shape like that. Take Salesforce, 181 Fremont, and the Millennium Tower, and you've also moved downtown's center of gravity. I think it's marking a dramatic shift in the weight of the city from the traditional financial district core to South of Market, which has been happening for a while. This is the new center of town. Theoretically, this is the heart of big city San Francisco. And in that respect, the Salesforce Tower represents something much larger than the building itself. It's an unavoidable time stamp on a dramatically changed city, new economy, new demographics. So an opinion on this structure can be much more than a question of aesthetic. It can reflect who you are and where you might fit or not fit in San Francisco 2017. For some people it means, wow, that's a job. I can work downtown and, and walk to work from, the, from my apartment in one rink on. For other people it means, uh-oh, more people with more money putting more pressure on the housing market, I'm scared. It's not just a building. It's not just a building. It's a force. <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> Okay, so what happens next? Now, they top the building off tomorrow. I was just speaking with the assistant construction manager. He says they hope to have the certificate of occupancy for this building before the end of the year. So they'll probably be moving people into this building before it's actually really finished on the interior in the upper floors. And then some other interesting thing happens. You know, we get to see what it looks like at night. And then we'll get this sort of long period where everyone out here can digest what this new 
building means for the skyline. Remember, it took about 40 years for people to warm up to Sutro Tower. So how people will feel about this building, something we might be talking about for many years to come. We're live on top of the Salesforce Tower. Alan, back to you. Great perspective, Wilson. Appreciate it. Thank you so much.